from massive MIMO to 256 gram, faulty to full 2100 MHz free farm, and much, much more. Vodafone has been up to so much since the start of 2017, it is almost inconceivable. First things first, I'm going to talk about voice-based technologies. So back in May of this year, Vodafone released Faulty to their customers, which enables voice calls to be made over the 4G network without circuit switch fallback. Now, Vaulty is currently available to customers with a Samsung Galaxy S7 or S7 Edge, as well as the XM in a number of top UK cities like London, Leeds, Slough, Reading, Aberdeen, and so on. Perhaps a more important and more noticeable voice technology that I have personally experienced is the 2G to 3G mid-call voice handover technology. So if your call through circuit switch fallback drops to 3G and then later on due to signal conditions 2G, that's not ideal because the voice call being carried on 2G means data can't be used and also 2G has a higher drop call rate and poorer call quality than 3G. So with mid-call 2G to 3G voice handover, the call gets handed over from being on 2G to being on the 3G network ensuring much better call quality, reliability and reduced drop call rates which is very very good and I've used this lots and lots of times on a whole variety of sites from sort of modernised beacon sites all the way to actually seemingly legacy sites as well it is deployed on a very large proportion of Vodafone's network now that we've talked about recent technology upgrades done by Vodafone to improve voice reliability, call quality and so on, it's a great opportunity to transition into talking about upgrades to massively improve the data experience for as many people as possible. Since early last year, Vodafone has been re-farming their 2100 MHz from 3G to 4G. Now this started off as a 5 MHz carrier being, being moved from 3G to 4G all the way up to now where the entirety of the 2100 MHz band is used for 4G in a number of cities such as Manchester, Birmingham as well as parts of London as well and I'm sure there's plenty of other cities with it as well. Now this is absolutely major because a paired 15 megahertz carrier added to your 4G spectrum portfolio is a huge amount of spectrum, especially when you consider that Vodafone's base 4G layer is 10 megahertz paired on band 20. So adding 15 megahertz of L21, 2100 megahertz spectrum more than doubles your capacity in that area. So that is absolutely huge. Now, some of the technologies mentioned in the voice section earlier in this video help with this. So, Volti shifts traffic off 2G and 3G onto 4G, which therefore means that it's good to move more spectrum over to 4G because it's not really being used so much for 2G and 3G. And the 2G to 3G call mid-call handover technology means that more calls are on 3G, which means more spectrum can be shifted off 2G onto 3G. And specifically what this means is that the 900 megahertz band can have an additional 3G carrier added to it to then make up for the complete re-farm of 2100 megahertz from 3G to 4G. So 900 megahertz now in those re-farm 2100 areas has two 3G carriers one on the normal 2938 and then the second carrier on 2987 for the UARFCNs. Vodafone have also recently deployed in certain areas packet data handover where devices which are moving data on the 3G system can then move over to 4G mid data session as opposed to having to go completely idle or almost completely idle in 3G in order to then move up and reselect onto 4G. Because the problem with modern smartphones is that 
they do not tend to go day to idle very often due to the multitude of apps all sort of sending and receiving as you time bits of data all the time almost and those tiny little bits of data do keep the phone's modem sufficiently active that it is not able to reselect onto 4G normally. Packet switch data handover therefore obviously has the benefit of shifting traffic off 3G and onto 4G meaning that even less capacity can be given to 3G and more spectrum and capacity onto 4G and therefore once again adding to the ability to enable things like the entire reform of the 2100 MHz band. And it's not just the 2100 MHz band which has had a refarm to 4G going on either. Vodafone's band 3 allocation has been popping up as LTE in more and more places this year. Namely of importance to me being the sort of ultra dense high load area that is Brighton city centre where three sites now have 4G on band 3 alongside the band 20 which is notable primarily because Brighton is an O2 hosted beacon NSN area where up until this point they were broadly just band 20 only so the addition of band 3 is definitely a nice addition to the area and does boost capacity actually quite a lot meaning that reasonable speeds were attainable even when the place gets actually really quite busy whereas before we just banned 20 occasionally speeds did become rather low once the place did get busy. In time I'm sure that Brighton will get the full treatment like entire 2100 megahertz refarm. Band 3 4G is also deployed on some ultra busy sites in other parts of the country as well. Namely, I know of a few in London. Proceeding on from capacity gains through spectrum addition, it's vital to talk about MIMO, something that Vodafone has really developed and deployed extensively way beyond what myself and many others expected them to do in our wildest imaginations pretty much. So Vodafone has got 4x4 MIMO aka 44R deployed on several hundred sites already and this 44R is generally deployed on band 7, so their 2600 megahertz band which is a 20 megahertz paired carrier. 4x4 MIMO with the right device increases the 64 gram speeds available from this 20 megahertz carrier from 150 megabits per second up to 300 megabits per second so going from 2x2 MIMO that you traditionally find to 4x4 MIMO can up to double the speed available to an end user terminal on that site which is absolutely massive but 4x4 MIMO also has a whole raft of improvements aside from sort of maximum speed to the users of that cell so it improves things like cell edge performance which therefore reduces cell sector capacity drain which is good for everyone the increased receive diversity means that devices can communicate more effectively in the uplink direction with the mast as well. So 4x4 MIMO is really very good and it's present on band 7 in a lot of areas way outside of London. So for example in Portsmouth, Reading, Bracknell, Birmingham, Manchester just to name a few. So the 4x4 MIMO has really spread on band 7 and in some areas they don't just have it on band 7, they also have it on band 1. Now this is primarily only seen in London at this point in time because as you can probably work out, 4x4 MIMO on band 7 alongside 15 MHz 
on band one, just in two by two, and then obviously band 20 alone, so even without 4F4 on band one, provides a huge amount of capacity. So having that and 4x4 MIMO on band one as well, is only something that you need in critically ultra dense environments like in London. Although I'm sure that we will see it spread to urban centres outside of London in time. Due to the areas that the 4x4 MIMO on band 7 is present in, it spans all of Vodafone's vendor areas. So in London that will be Ericsson, in Reading, Bracknell and Portsmouth, Nokia Siemens Networks and Manchester and Birmingham are Huawei. So they really have pulled out all the stops to get 4x4 band 7 out there and like I say for very good reason because the performance uplift is absolutely colossal with the right device and is very beneficial to even those like me who don't have the right device and all these screenshots were taken regrettably on a device which is 2x2. Two two. There is a way you can get even more speed and capacity out of your spectrum than with just 4x4 four four, and that is higher modulation schemes. So going from 64 gram being the highest downlink modulation to 256 gram, which provides a speed boost of around about 1.3 times, which doesn't sound like much, but it really can be. So if we go back to our standard 20 megahertz band seven carrier on two by two MIMO and 64 gram, you're looking at about 150 megabits per second max. If you then deploy 4x4, that then increases the speed to 300 megabits per second. But if you then add 256 gram on top of that, that then increases your 300 by a factor of 1.3, which gets you to almost 400 megabits per second off that single carrier, which is just absolutely massive. And Vodafone does have 256 gram deployed into quite a large area currently, although you're most likely to see it around London. Put together, 4x4 MIMO on band 1, 4x4 MIMO on band 7, and 2 voltage cram on band 20, band 1, band 7, and aggregate it all together, and the maximum theoretical speeds that you can achieve are really, really high. Ballpark figure you're looking at is just a bit below 800 megabits per second in optimum signal conditions and so on. But even so, that's still a very, very high download speed. Vodafone hasn't even just developed 4x4 MIMO either. They've also been trialling and deploying massive MIMO, which uses things like 64x64 64 elements in a panel, which is just absolutely incredible, although massive MIMO is primarily used for TDD at, the, at this moment, FTD isn't supported so well, however of course Vodafone does have a chunk of band 38 spectrum which is 2600 MHz TDD which is used for this massive MIMO. Massive MIMO is an interesting and fairly new, well very new to the UK market and even the European market insofar as European networks have only really been trialling massive MIMO up to this point. Although wider in the if you look wider in the world, other markets have got massive MIMO very heavily deployed, such as the Japanese markets. Massive MIMO isn't as such for chasing really, really high peak speeds. It's more for producing a colossal amount of capacity to a small area. In trials performed around Vodafone's headquarters in Newbury, around about around 500 to 600 megabit per second in aggregate throughput was achieved using massive MIMO. And this this figure is attained through technologies like beamforming which Massive MIMO supports, which increases the amount of capacity that you can achieve with a certain amount of spectrum, especially when a lot of users are involved in a compact, high-density environment. 
such as to serve stadiums and very high usage environments. And in fact, Vodafone used massive MIMO antennas at a recent motorsport racing event. However, we have not finished our Vodafone first half 2017 technology roundup just yet, although I do realise this video has got quite long at this point. Vodafone have developed their own mini macro site, which is a very compact mast and cabinet enclosure for them to deploy in very sensitive locations and space restricted areas as well, either for coverage or for urban dense capacity and therefore these come in a variety of different configurations from low band to high band to therefore support their different roles and one is currently deployed in Paul's Kerno in Cornwall to provide 4G and 3G coverage to a certain area there which was previously underserved. Finally the Vodafone and O2 network share in London is being unwound by Vodafone and O2 starting very recently in order to provide them the ability to deploy much more capacity as they wish throughout London. And this has already materialised in the form of 4F4 L21 appearing in part of the O2 control zone of Oxford Street which is obviously a very high demand location and therefore an additional 10 megahertz of spectrum especially with 4x4 MIMO is very much appreciated. So that I think draws us to the end of Vodafone's technology rollout upgrades in the months since the start of 2017. I am planning to do videos exploring the RF layouts of these 4x4 MIMO sites that are covered earlier on in this video at a later date as well as also making videos obviously about O2 and 3's network development since the commencement of 2017. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you some other time.